Hey, Cardinals. Welcome back to the art room. How you doing today? Today, I thought I'd present you with a little bit of a challenge. Are you ready for it? All right. Here goes. So here's what you have to do. You're going to hold up your non-dominant hand. So the hand that you don't hold your pencil in. For me, that's my left. And you're going to hold your hand in front of you. You're going to look at it. But you're going to do more than look at it. You're going to actually see it. But you're going to see your hand, and you're going to try to draw it in as much detail as you possibly can. Now, for this challenge, there are two rules. Rule one, you can't look at your paper. Rule two, once you put your pencil down on your paper, you can't pick it back up until you're done. All right? And then let's see what we come up with at the end. Alrighty? So I'm gonna flip my camera on here um, so that you can see what I'm doing down here on the desk. So, here we go. I got my hand. I'm gonna hit this button right here. Boop. Get us started. My pencil is on my paper. And here we go. First, I'm going to come up the wrist, and then I notice that there is a little crease that goes from my wrist into the palm of my hand. And it kind of forks at the end of it. Now we go back down that crease, and we start coming up. And then there's another crease that goes around into the palm of my hand. And back up. space between my thumb and my pointer finger. And I'm going to try to follow that line back down to about here. And now I'm going to follow the line up the side of my thumb until it turns right about here. And it comes up curves in a little bit. And up and over the tip of my thumb. Now I'm coming back down the other side of my thumb. And once I get to about here, this is where that first crease is, there's a little line that comes up and over and down. back and comes back out and around, right about here. Now I'm going to continue down my thumb, and I notice there's another little crease right about here. Continue down. Voila! That's my thumb. Now I'm going to come back, and I'm going to start making my way up my hand to my pointer finger. We haven't quite got there yet. Still going up the hand, up the hand, up the hand, up the hand. And right about here is that first joint of the finger. Now, I'm going to continue up the pointer finger. And I notice there's a little line right here at the crease that comes around. Then I keep going up my pointer finger till I get to right about here. And there's another line for another joint. And I go up and around the tip of my pointer finger. And then I start to go back down. There's that first joint again, top. Come down. I notice that I can kind of see where my knuckle bulges out right about here. And then back in and come back down and attach to the base of the hand. There's a little line in there like that. Now for the middle finger. I start going up the middle finger and then I have to stop because I have a ring on that finger. So I'm going to follow the bottom line of the ring all the way down. 
Now the way I've got my hand positioned, it's kind of confusing because my ring finger overlaps my middle finger. If you're starting to get confused by how your fingers are overlapping each other, here's a pro tip. Close one eye. Just one. There we go. When both of your eyes op are uh, open, you can see uh, what's called depth. And sometimes that can throw you off. By closing one eye, you lose your depth perception and it flattens out what you're looking at um, into what appears to be a two-dimensional image so that you can really start to see how everything overlaps. Like this thing that I'm drawing right now, uh, this is my ring finger because it overlaps my middle finger. And there's the knuckle. Now I can't forget about my middle finger, otherwise it's going to look like I'm missing one. So I gotta follow that ring finger back up and around the knuckle. And come back along the top of that ring finger. Oh, there's a little fingernail right in there. Let's draw that. And let the middle and the little finger tip. Now I can continue with the middle finger. So I got up and then there's that first joint. Second joint, and up and around the tip of the middle finger, and starting to come back down. And there's the knuckle, and that's where we reconnect to the ring finger. Now we can follow the ring finger back out this way. Around the knuckle, we have that already drawn, and we stop about here. And my pinky finger looks like it goes in and over my palm. So now I'm coming back down into the palm of my hand. And it goes around the tip of the finger. And I start to come back this way. There's a joint right about there, and coming back, and there's another joint right about there, and tip down, and there's another joint right about there. Oh, I can feel the tape. So, because the goal of this isn't really to end up with a beautiful drawing, if you go off your paper, no big deal, just keep going. Um, unless you're working at your, uh, your table, you don't want to go drawing on your table. So maybe put another piece of paper underneath the paper you're working on, because I'm about to, to draw on my art desk. Yep, there we go, I'm drawing on my art desk, I can feel it. But I'm not worried about it. If your art desk is super clean, did you really do any work? into the palm and back down. Let's see what we ended up with, shall we? Hey, not bad. It's a wee bit chunky, but not bad. How'd it go? What'd you end up with? Chances are, it probably wasn't the best drawing you've ever done. That wasn't the point, though. What you just did is called a blind contour drawing. What's a blind contour drawing? Well, a blind contour drawing, uh, that's a technique that was developed by a gentleman by the name of Caimon Nicolatis. Now, Caimon Nicolatis was a camouflage artist during World War I. Now, after World War I, he moved to New York and he started teaching art in New York and he developed this technique. The point of the technique was to train people's 
hands to work with their eyes. Your eye is following along the outline or contour of whatever it is you're looking at. In this case, my hand. Now, as my eye is following my hand, my other hand, with my pencil, is attempting to follow along in the same direction as my eyes are moving. So it links up your eye to your hand. Uh, this is a great way to improve uh, not only how well you draw, but how well you see. It causes you to notice some details that you wouldn't necessarily otherwise pick out. A lot of people think that the ability to draw well comes from the hand. Um, what I've found is that it's less about the hand and more about the eye and being able to really see the detail in things. And this is something that can help you do that. So what I try to do before I sit down and do uh, a big drawing or a regular drawing or whatever it is I'm doing, I use this as a warm-up exercise. And it kind of establishes that link between my eye and my hand. Well, I hope you had fun with this today and uh, I hope you keep practicing. If you practice this every single day, your drawings are gonna get way better in no time. Trust me on that one. But that's all I've got for today. Have fun, take care, enjoy, and I will see you next time in art class.